Hi and welcome to SSW TV. We're at NDC Sydney and I'm here with Mark Seaman. Welcome Mark. Hello and thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank so, you for having me. So you've just had your session, so tell me, what was it about? So it's called uh, Functional Architecture, the Pits of Success. And basically what I um, try to explain in this session is that um, there's a lot of things where, um, you know, I'm, I have a background as an object-oriented software developer and yep. architect and lead developer and all of those things. So I spent, you know, like a decade doing object-oriented design and there was a lot of things where, um, you know, I just struggled to get everything to work, you know, like, um, you know, doing inversion of control or, you know, doing test-driven development or, you know, following the ports and adapters architecture and all of those things. And, you know, for a, for a decade, I thought that that was basically just what, soft, you know, that's what software development ought to be like. That's just, you know, part of the game. Um, so you have, you have all of those thick books written by Martin Fowler and Robert T. Martin and Eric Evans and all of those you people. You wrote one as well. I wrote one as well, yeah. <laughs> and they're all very thick. And, 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 you know, I didn't really think about that other than, you know, it really takes a lot of effort to do things right. Yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know, also you can make a living out of that if you're a consultant, so that's, uh, that's, that's nice. Um, but then I just started to pick up, you know, functional programming because I thought, you know, it was interesting. Hmm. And I didn't really have any, you know, plan for doing that. I just thought it was fascinating. So I started doing that for a couple of years. And then after having done a lot of functional programming with F Sharp, I started to realize I mean, that a lot of those things that, you know, I really struggled with in, in you know, in object-oriented design, at least with C Sharp, and I struggled with getting teams to understand and so on. Those things just sort of, you know, fall out naturally out of doing, you know, programming with F Sharp or with Haskell, which is something mm. that I'm, you know, dabbling with a little bit at the moment. So, um, so test testability, for example, this is a pretty yeah. good example. Um, there is, you know, you could argue that, you know, doing test-driven development leads to, you know, test institute test-induced damage, as you know, this David Heinemeyer Hansen uh, phrase that he uses. And uh, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot to that criticism in the sense that, you know, why would you, you know, why would you write code with, you know, a lot of constructor injection and interfaces all over and so on. And if you really look at it, you know, all, the, all your logic is, you know, dis distributed across, you know, a lot of files and so on. And the only reason why you do that is because you want to be able to test it. But, you, but you're also making your code very complicated. But then it turns out that when you start doing functional programming, you know, the, the ideal design in functional programming is what we call a pure function. Mm. And there are various reasons that you can, you know, reason your way, uh, you know, you can reason why that is, but basically it turns out that, you know, a pure function is intrinsically testable. A pure function is something you can always easily unit test. Because it has an input and an output. Because and it, it doesn't has an, has any side effects. Exactly. Yeah. You know, everything that the function does is based on its input. Hmm. And it's deterministic. Because otherwise it's not pure. That's by yeah. you know by definition. And that means it's super easy to test. You just pass some input into it and then you look at the output and then you have Excellent. a unit test. So there's no need for dependent there's no need for things like dependency injection. Right. Yeah. But, but also what I think is, is the most important message here is that there is no conflict. You know, the ideal design of a function, the ideal functional programming design is by itself already testable. So you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to do have, you know, like a secondary concern that always says, but we also need to make sure that this is testable. Mm. And basically it's just, a, you know, do it right, you know, make good functional design it will also automatically be testable there. Mm. So it's just, you know, that's a pit of success in the sense that, you know, just, you automatically just get there, yep. if that makes sense. So does it also, so how does it apply with things like, so you're also trying to apply things like the solid principles to functional design, or, are they, or is it almost like a different paradigm that I think doesn't apply? I think some of the solid principles sort of have a, you know, corresponding thing that you may want to consider when you're thinking about functional programming, but there are also some of them that don't really make sense uh, much, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm constantly re-evaluating my position on that, so, mm. you know, uh, yeah. my answer to that question, you know, last year would be different from the answer that this I'm going to give you next year. Um, so, but, if we're, um, yeah. so if we're saying that, so you're saying that functional programming lets us fall into the pit of the success mm -hmm. is, a, is, is what you're saying. So, you're, so what's your advice for someone who's currently writing C-sharp 
and wants to take advantage of some of those ideas and move in that direction? Oh, uh, that, you know, that one is easy. Just switch to F-sharp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, well, but, but basically what I mean is that, you know, the shift from C-sharp to F-sharp is actually fairly easy in the sense you're already on the .NET framework, which yep. F-sharp is also. And F-sharp is multi-paradigmatic, so it does object orientation also. And the reason why it does that is because it, you know, you want F-sharp to be able to interoperate with all the C-sharp code that you already have. Yep. Um, so, um, so that means that you know you can spend like a week just learning and understanding the syntax of the language. It doesn't take much time to actually learn, you know, syntax of a new language. It yep. Usually, it doesn't anyway. Yep. But then, you know, so you can probably get to a place where you can get some F-sharp code to compile fairly quickly. Yep. It's probably not going to be particularly idiomatic F-sharp at that point, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Because you're on the journey. You are on the journey. And, and the nice thing about F-sharp is that it enables you to have, you know, a gradual learn. You know, you can gradually learn and become more sophisticated mm -hmm. instead of having to learn, you know, everything at once. Mm. So, yeah. Because, because, because I'm such a C-sharp object-oriented yeah. developer, I, I kind of feel like so I can mix C sharp and F sharp in my solution. Oh, I can absolutely, yeah. go and create. So, but see, I want to go and create F sharp classes and then dependency inject them into my C sharp. You could, classes. yeah. Is that is that an approach that you think is going to like? How would you intermingle your C sharp and your F sharp? Well, that's that's actually a, a very possible way to do it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if you have something where you think it's it'd be valuable to write that in F sharp, yep. then you can you know after you've done all the F sharp code, you can create a little you know. A, class, you know, like a facade, that's actually design pattern. Yeah. Hey. Uh, so you can create a facade that is, that is object-oriented around all of your functional code, and you can still define that, that facade class in F-sharp. But then, you know, as seen from C-sharp, it just looks like, you know, any other class, and you can just create an instance of that object and start using it. Wow. Um, so that's, that's absolutely possible if you need to do that. I did that with a client uh, a couple of years ago because we identified a particular problem where we said, you know, we have a lot of C-sharp code here. Um, but there is a bit of logic where we were looking at it and we said, all right, yeah, this is sort of complicated, but, um, and we can, we can solve it in C-sharp, but there is no really good way of doing it because we had lots of th different things we wanted to do. We wanted it to be maintainable. We wanted to have some type safety in it. And, and you know, there was a lot of concerns that we had. So we were thinking about, well, the only thing we can come up with that really you know, addresses all of those problems is, is to you know, um, apply the visitor design pattern. But the problem with the visitor design pattern is that it's super complex. And it really spreads out your logic you know, across a lot of files. Yep. And lots of people really don't understand how the visitor design pattern works. So we were a bit concerned that that would actually probably not make the, you know, the code more maintainable. So we were a couple of people who were discussing that. And we just you know, we asked the customer. So I was just there as an external consultant. So I asked the customer, um, nice, sophisticated developers. I said, well, you know, we could also just express this as F-sharp, because F-sharp can do this thing with pattern matching. Um, and the pattern matching and it enabled us to solve all the specific problems that we had in a very, you know, uh, declaratively. So I just gave them a sketch of what it would look like, and it would be basically be like 20 lines of F-sharp code. Wow. And I said, you know, would, you be more com would it be okay for you to have this single F-sharp source file that is basically all, you know, just declarative. It, it's very declarative. It doesn't really look like it's doing anything, if you yeah. will. But it's type safe, and, and you can actually, can actually get a compiler warning if there are, you know, special cases you don't, uh, you don't you're not handling. Yeah. Because one of the things that really nice about pattern matching in F-sharp is that, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of, of sub-clauses, if you will, if you forget to deal with, a, with, you know, an input scenario, the compiler will actually tell you. Uh, which is something you can't really get the C-sharp compiler yeah, to definitely. do. And that was the particular problem we had in this case. We knew that we had a finite set of things that we needed to, to deal with. Yeah. Um, but it was just a, you know, a pretty big finite set of things. Wow. Um, so we did that. They were cool with that. They said, well, okay, let's do that. So we just packaged that into a little library. Yep. And then you know, gave it you know, a nice object-oriented facade. You know, and then um, we called that F-sharp code from all the other C-sharp code that we had. And that's and, a goal, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, it's just the, the end of the story then is that, you know, um, so we kept on doing C-sharp code then, and that was just sitting there and doing yeah. whatever it was uh, doing. And then I left the, um, the project because the, um, the client ran out of, out of money or whatever it was. And, uh, and then I came back to them a year, a year later because they had some other stuff for me to do. And then they just said to me, you know, by the way, that, you know, that F-sharp code that you left us with, 
we actually discovered that it, it was really expressive. So we started adding more stuff into it oh. um, because we found that that was actually much easier than doing a lot of the C-sharp stuff. That's excellent. And so it just grew and grew. And, and so now they were actually getting into this situation where they said, well, we actually, we feel comfortable about having some F, you know, F-sharp code in, in our thing. So by the way, the stuff that, you, that we just asked you to come in, would you like to write that in F-sharp? And I said, well, yeah. That's excellent. Why, why not? And, and that's kind of a great <laughs> point, is that you don't have to go and I'm going to create my whole solution in F-sharp. Oh, now. no, you don't you have to. You can actually say, let's start doing the parts in F-sharp that make sense, yep. and then we can test the water, and then we can evolve our solution as we get more comfortable Absolutely, with it. Absolutely, yeah. Excellent. Well, look, there's a whole lot of learning there and there's a, that opens up some really new interesting doorways. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on SSW TV. Sure. Hey, everybody. It's me, Scott Hansman, here with Adam Kogan <laughs> at NDC Sydney. We're hanging out. It's SSW Video. How are you, sir? That's I'm how you do well. an intro. No, go ahead. <laughs> I'll be right here. Please. <laughs>